that, I will head straight into my presentation, um, which is pre neolithic navigation in the Mediterranean. And navigation had to have occurred at least 800,000 years ago, if not earlier, when Homo erectus navigated across the Wallace Line in Indonesia to reach the islands of Flores, Timor, and Roti. Yet the physical evidence for navigation is only about 10,000 years old. There is also ongoing debate as to whether Homo erectus arrived in Europe via the Straits of Gibraltar or via the Near Eastern Corridor, or both about one million years ago. We can also point to the indirect evidence for navigation to the Mediterranean islands prior to the Holocene in that large endemic mammals which probably arrived there when the Mediterranean last dried out about five million years ago, became extinct subject to subsequent to the arrival of Homo sapiens. There is no evidence for pre-Neolithic visits to the Balearic Islands, which is the only island group west of Corsica and Sardinia, which we will refer to as Cor Sardinia, since they have been regularly united by the now shallow Straits of Bonifacio. In the eastern Mediterranean, Cyprus, visible from the mainland, has always been an island. It was not visited by humans until the PPN, or just prior, prim primarily evidenced by the continuing existence of its diminutive pachyderms and hippopotami until these were rapidly exterminated after the first visit by humans about 11,000 BC. Its colonization has been the subject of intensive and interesting recent research which will not be treated here. The focus of this presentation will therefore be on the central Mediterranean. To understand the pre-Neolithic navigation to Mediterranean islands, it's first, it is first important to understand the changes in the bathymetry of the Mediterranean after the last glacial maximum, when the sea levels were 120 to 130 meters lower than today. Between marine isotope stages 4 and 3, 70 to 20,000 years ago, the sea level fluctuated between 60 and 80 meters below current sea levels. Um, <clears throat> this picture shows here, shown here reflects the coastline at the last glacial maximum. As stated, these fluctuated over time prior to and after this date. In the Aegean, and I'm moving from the top to the bottom, Imbros and Lemnos were attached to, the, to Anatolia at the last glacial maximum, but only for relatively short periods of time. In the northern Sporades, the east northeastern group, including Eura, has always been separated from Alonisos by a deep channel. Kithnos has always been an island. Icaria was attached just. Naxos formed part of a large island group in the center of the Aegean. Melos has always been an island, and the small island of Chiali, source of poor quality obsidian, was possibly an island, just. Talki was an island attached to Rhodes, and Crete has always been an island with Gavnos about 46 kilometers to the south. In the Ionian Sea, Cephalonia and Zakynthos have always been separated from the mainland. And in Sicily, with a minimum present-day depth of 90 meters at the northern end of the Straits of Messina, um, was probably attached to Italy, although tectonic activity does not make this an assured conclusion. In the Tyrrhenian Sea, Cor Sardinia has always been separated from the Tuscan archipelago by a channel over 10 kilometers wide. And in the Adriatic, the northern Adriatic plain extended south to Ancona, just south, south of Ancona, and the mid-Adriatic island of Palagrusa off the map. Um, has always, um, that island has always been an island. This was an important stepping stone, almost virtually, between eastern and the western shores. This island is equidistant between Croatia and Italy. It belongs to Croatia and is not a tourist resort. Um, 
During the early Paleolithic, prior to 250,000 years ago, at the time of Homo erectus, Homo hydropogensis, in, Sard in the Sardinia province of Sassari, in the region of Perfugas, several open air sites, mainly along river courses, have yielded early Paleolithic material variously described as Claptonian or Acheulean. The best known site is that of Sacoa de Sa Multa, which has been extensively excavated, and the materials have been typologically dated to 500 to 300,000 years ago. A supposed Homo erectus phalange estimated to date from 300 to 250,000 years ago found at Grotta near Kiremule in 1996 has been proven not to be human, and the occupation of Corbedu Cave east of Yura Nura in East Central Sardinia is possible but questioned. In Sicily, Clactonian Acheulean like material has been found in the eastern provinces of Catania, Enna, and Syracuse, with most found on fluvial terraces of the river Simeto, as well as several sites further south. Their attribution is, however, questionable since the material also resembles Bronze Age expedient tools. This map of Greece shows the known middle and upper Paleolithic sites in the southern Balkans, putting into context those middle Paleolithic Homo Neanderthalis sites found in island settings. The site of Eschino on Cocciada, Imbros, has produced middle Paleolithic as well as late Paleolithic material. Whether the now islands were walked to or navigated to is impossible to specify. In the northern Sporadis, on Alonisos, Jura, Jura, and six other islands, lithic material, lithic scatters evidence has been found by Adamantius Samson. On Naxos, the tools manufactured using the Lavalois technique has been discovered, have been discovered on Stelida, at Stelida, in the ongoing excavations in a church quarry on the west side of the island by a team led by Tristan Carter. Cephalonia and Zakynthos have produced lithic scatters dated between 110 and 35,000 years ago, and on Crete, between Plakias and Agios Patros on the south coast, tools dated 130 to 45 to 35,000 years ago were discovered by a team led by Curtis Reynolds and Thomas Strasser between 2008 and 2009. And finally, on Gavlos, tools snapped during the early Mysterian and Muster using the early Mysterian and Mysterian Lavalois techniques have been found dating from as early as 120,000 years ago. A detail showing a detailed map of the northern Sparats, um, Middle Paleolithic and pre-Neolithic sites in the northern Sparats, most by in the form of lithic scatters, which are difficult to date. Note that the islands would have been larger when visited or occupied, and those at the western end of the chain were probably attached to the mainland. We'll come back to the um, cave of Cyclops a little later. On Cor Sardinia, a middle Paleolithic site is thought to have been identified at Cosca Cave, but its attribution has been contested. The occupation of Grotta Corbedu uncontestably dates to the Middle Paleolithic. And what is important to note is that it's almost certainly through Corsica that the people arrived in Sardinia because of it's visible from the coast, whereas um, Sardinia is much less visible. And obviously the sea crossing is considerably longer. The Aegean evidence for navigation by Homo sapiens during the upper Paleolithic and post-glacial prior to the Neolithic is extensive, so whilst I'm showing you this map with many red dots, I will only mention a few. Melos had to be visited during the late Pleistocene as evidenced by the obsidian found at French decay from a level dated about 13,000 BC. Marulus and on Kithnos and the cave of Cyclus on Europe, both excavated by Adamantius Samson, are interesting cases. 
Tithnos was colonized about 9000 BC by navigators coming from the Near East when sea levels were 29 meters below the present day level. They imported suets in the process of domestication and let them loose to be hunted. So this is a somewhat similar case to that of uh, Cyprus. The built circular semi-sunken huts at Marulas buried their dead at court. Um, they built circular semi-sunken huts at Marulas, buried their dead according to Near Eastern traditions in a crouched fetal position and possibly traded Melian obsidian. Yura was colonized about 8000 BC by navigators, originating again from the Near East, also importing suids, which they let loose. When these did not prosper, they imported goats, which are still there. Crete. Several Mesolithic sites have been identified on the south coast of Crete between Plakles and Agios Pavlos by a team led by Curtis Runnels and Thomas Sasser in between 2008 and 2009, and this is complemented by a site further east near Mount Kapka. On Kavdos, a single find of a microorthic black flint trapezoidal transversal arrowhead made from a blade segment typologically dated to the final Mesolithic 8th, 7th millennium BC, suggests that this small island, 46 kilometers south of Crete, was visited by the Mesolithic hunter-gatherers. There are numerous pre-Neolithic sites in Sicily, most of which are coastal or near-coastal, as identified by the red dots. Some of these date from prior to the Holocene, such as the caves of San Teodoro and Adaura Cave on the north coast, and the Cala dei Genovesi on the now island of Levanzo. Or Levanzo. <laughs> on Corsica, eight Mesolithic sites have been identified, split between the north and the south of the island. And I won't read them to you because nobody will remember the names. And on Sardinia, there are four identified Mesolithic sites. There is indirect evidence for maritime contacts through contemporaneous similarities in the lithic traditions prior to the Mesolithic across open waters between the Bay of Antalya region in southern Anatolia and western Greece, and between the Italian Romanellian and that of the Balkans in a direct line across the Adriatic Sea via the island of Palagrusa. Finally, I would mention the puzzling presence of a few shards of coarse pottery at Grotta de Luzzo in Sicily, dated between 7000 and 6500 BC. So, how did these people navigate along the coast or across open waters? There is no hard evidence, but dugouts existed in the Mesolithic. Reed boats are a possibility, as on rafts, or maybe all of the above were used, who knows, Kinsabe. Thank you.